Welcome to another episode of UCRD Reviews. So today I have another new release. This one's in the KA Signature line. This is the MSK008 DJ narrative version. So the DJ was an interesting mobile suit. It appeared in Zeta Gundam originally in its green colors, piloted by none other than Amuro Ray of Mobile Suit Gundam. Even though this mobile suit looks like something straight out of a Xeon factory, it was actually a Karaba mobile suit. Then when Gundam Narrative came out, the movie that takes place after uh, Gundam Unicorn, they had the same Karaba forces using these DJs in different colors with a slightly different loadout in the movie, uh, kind of toward the beginning. And there were multiples of them. In Zeta Gundam, we only saw the one DJ, and in Narrative, there were a few of them. So the KA Signature line decided to update its DJ figure by repainting it, giving it some new accessories, and coming out with this. So this is a fairly new release. The original DJ was um, released in February of 2017, and now we have this one, which again, it's probably going to be the same sculpt. Um, I've looked at pictures of the old one. I do not own the old one yet. And I say yet because they plan on buying it, but um, it looks like the same figure with some new accessories. So let's check out what it comes with. All right, so let's take a look at the figure here. So this is the DJ. We're going to take all this, these plastic bits off. They do this to protect the paint in transit. There's quite a few on this figure. Usually there's only one or two. This piece is, there we go. Got to get it out of the waist there. So this is the figure. You can see it's uh, pretty standard to the KA Signature line. It has all the decals and things all over it. Um, so it doesn't come with a sticker sheet this time around. You'll notice that what looks to be the cockpit door can actually open up, but the cockpit, much like the Rick Diaz, is actually in the head. So this is just a movable part of the armor frame, and it is quite movable in this figure for whatever reason. I guess for posing, and it does have multiple panels all through here that can move around uh, multiple pieces to the skirt armor. So it's got a lot going for it. Um, you do have these wings that are back here, these wing binders, and they're all on hinges. They can move around. You have uh, storage racks for weapons on this uh, shoulder as well. And some pretty decent articulation here. It doesn't go too far up on the arms. The hands, uh, I'll talk about the hands more in a little bit, but you have some wrist articulation in there. It's a pretty big, pretty beefy ball joint. The arms can fold out quite a bit. So you can see the joint there. The head moves around a bit, not a whole lot, just because of the way the head is designed. Now in the original DJ figure, this faceplate, for whatever reason, was removable. I don't remember um, it, it having a different face and anything else, but the faceplate now is glued on for unknown reasons. You do have the wing binder here, which will go into, there's some uh, storage racks up in there. The legs are good, you do have these cables. Uh, they're just kind of set in here, so it doesn't really hinder articulation. You do have this rear skirt armor piece that kind of blocks some stuff up. The feet move around pretty well, and here they're kind of squeaky, and you have some armor flaps in the legs, but pretty, pretty general standard articulation, nothing crazy. I do like the paint. It matches the Gundam narrative colors really, really well, almost almost looks Titan's colors, even though it's not Titan's at all. Um, and you see the mono eye in there. The mono eye is not movable, unfortunately, in the day and age where they've made leaps and bounds to make movable mono eyes in the version anime line. The KA Signature line still kind of falls short of that and does not have um, that technology for whatever reason. So let's actually take a look at some of the accessories real quick. So let's go over the hands that you get in this set. We have some gun hands here with the trigger finger exposed. 
we actually have a second set of gun hands and when we go into the weaponry part of it we'll go over why you get two sets and you have of course the fists that are already on the figure you have some sword hands right there and finally you have some posing hands so a different hand set than your standard robot spirits release uh, you do have a stand piece again a regular robot spirits release is going to have a stand peg at the bottom of the figure but these ka signatures they usually include something like this for whatever reason so i believe the rest of this is weaponry so let's go ahead and oh no i'm wrong i'm totally wrong there's this thing this is a searchlight it's a uh little tiny piece that actually fits onto here and it's kind of angled you can see the hole right there and there we go so it comes with a searchlight and then there's a scene where a dj lands and turns on the searchlight at the ground and so you get a searchlight which isn't the most exciting accessory but it is exclusive to this particular figure so let's take a look at the weapons real quick so the first weapon I want to look at is actually the Beam Naginata. And so this is the handle here, uh, very similar to what comes with the Gelgoog. And you'll see it has kind of a slanted design. It does have blades to it. The blades are actually very small. I'm surprised. And I, I believe the downward slope is going to be the front of the blade. So then it becomes the opposite on the other side. And so you have something like this. You do have another handle and from what I can tell they're actually identical so I don't exactly know why you get two um, but there is a storage piece that I just dropped so this is the Naginata storage piece and it snaps in pretty easily again just like the Gelgoog it attaches to the rear skirt armor uh, right here and we're going to go ahead and plug it in, and that's pretty much how it goes. But you're going to use these, these hands to hold the beam Naginata. And let's take a look at the guns real quick. So the first set here is going to be the Clay Bazookas, which I found was an, always an interesting name. So you get two of these. Well, these weapon accessories are the same that come with the original DJ release. So there's, there's not really anything different here. They do have these connectors, which are on opposite sides, depending on the gun. And we'll, when we go into the storage, we'll go over why. You do have fold-out handles for both, which are, there we go. So the handle is on a swivel, and you can also drop them, and they won't break. But it's a nice piece, pretty detailed. It has uh, lots of caution markings all over it, very thin. Um, and again, you get two of them. You also get two uh, beam pistols. So these are the same one that the Rick Diaz comes with, or utilizes. There's not a Rick Diaz in the K signature line. But you see it has a fold-out handle, just like the clay bazookas, and a removable ECAP magazine, which is kind of neat. Other than that, it has a green camera down there, has the cables and all the markings that you need. And again, you get two of them. So we'll go over storage with these as well. So uh, you have the storage pieces there. You do get two extra um, magazines for the beam pistols, which can actually be stored up under here. And I believe they are oriented, yep, right like that. And so, they kind of the long portion faces forward and they store up in there just like that and you can kind of see them poking out right there now this final weapon here is exclusive to this particular release this is the beam rifle that the dj uses in gundam narrative so it's what looks to me like an extended version of the beam pistol. You can see it kind of holds the same shape. The rear magazine portion is different. 
as is the barrel. This one almost looks like it has a suppressor, even though beam rifles can't really be suppressed because they're beam rifles. It does have this handle piece, which they made an interesting design. It has a three peg design to it, so it can be in three different positions. Uh, the handle here can fold, just like all the other weapons. And you'll see this odd gap here. It's actually for these magazines. So you have these here. You have this is the bottom of the magazine where you see this groove right there. And I believe it goes in like this. Yep, there we go. And it fits almost like a P90 in the real world. Um, kind of a, a box magazine that's... So this makes it a bullpup gun just like the rest of the weapons because the magazine's behind the trigger. And it has the same storage piece, which in this case is removable. So you can just have the gun by itself. So speaking of storage, let's get into that real quick. So the DJ comes with this really neat uh, storage piece here that honestly looks like a confusing mess at first, but it is in two pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. And it stores on the shoulder. And let's take our searchlight off so you can see what what's going on here. And we're just gonna plug right in like that. And then we put it kind of back together the way it was. And it sits like this. Now, the middle part of this is actually for these E caps for the beam rifle. And I believe the bottom goes down. And there we go, where they just plug right in. So it's a really neat, almost like tactical storage that you don't see a whole lot in the Gundam franchise especially with beam weaponry, so it sticks in just like that. Now for the rest of the weapons, you see these odd clip things that they have here. So we'll fold the handle up, and you can actually store it on these pegs that are sticking out. And they actually store quite well. So they, they sit in there pretty good, just for, you know, for being friction stored. They'll sit in right like that. And then we can do the other side with the clay bazookas. And one of my magazines tried to run away there. And so you can store them in that fashion. You can also store them um, on the inside. So if we take this magazine storage off, and we're going to take this piece out, we'll just casually throw it. You can store them kind of on the inside. Let's see if I can get this on there. There we go. Kind of. Not quite. And, aha, there we go. I had to kind of wiggle it. And then you can store the other one like directly next to it. Kind of like that. So it's, it's a little more compact. We'll kind of line them up a little better. So you have something along the lines of that. So it's, it gives you options. Another thing you can do, so we'll take the beam pistols this time around, is do the same storage on the back here, on these winglets. You do want to be very careful with these, I don't think I mentioned that earlier, as well as the antenna. You do get a replacement antenna in the box here, so be mindful of that, and probably these two. All the pointy bits, be mindful of everything. But you can store here, um, we'll remove this real quick, you can store the, the big beam rifle back here. I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, so it has a lot of different storage options, which is, which is really neat. Now, going back to the hands, I did mention earlier that you get two different uh, trigger hands. So you have one that you can see is open and one that's not. For just about all these weapons, this style hand is the one that you want to use. I don't particularly know what this one would be good for. I mean, I, I think the weapons can be used with that hand as well, but it's just really difficult to kind of get them in there. I mean, it works. It fits pretty snug. I mean, there's, there's no real move in it. But then you get it in this one, which is 
the more open one, you can see it's much easier to put the hands on there and you achieve the same basic effect. Now, with the hand joints, uh, the original DJ had a problem with the hand joints where they would break. And now that I have the DJ figure, I can see why. So you have this ball joint here and you can see where it's um, two half pieces. So if you have a hand on here, let's say this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on, this hand moves up and down. And you can reorient this ball joint, you know, kind of twisting it over so that you have a different angle of movement. However, if you force, the, you know, this ball joint's moving up and down right now, if I try and go side to side with it, it's going to snap. I think that's how people are breaking these, these hands is, the, you know, this joint is made to go rotate in one direction. Now the whole thing itself will rotate around so you can go side to side, but if you force it in a direction it's not meant currently to go in, you're going to break this and you're going to make this figure completely useless. Um, so do be mindful of that. So real quick before I do my final thoughts on the figure, uh, the stand piece kind of plugs into the front here. It snaps in real easily and it's on there really, really good. It's honestly kind of hard to get off of there. So this piece works really well. It's not uh, flimsy or unreliable like some other stand pieces. Overall, I'm really impressed with the DJ figure. I originally was kind of on the fence about it when I pre-ordered it. I figured I would pre-order it, get it, review it, and then decide later on whether I wanted to keep it or not. This is my first Gundam narrative figure, and it is the first KA Signature Gundam narrative figure as well that's been released, so it wasn't really one high up on my list of things that I wanted. I do like that they gave us a DJ recolor, so we have one available because the original is trying to fetch a high price in the secondary market, but I like this figure a lot more than I thought I would. It's really solid. It has a lot of options for um, you know, storage and posing and things. It comes with all the weapons it needs. There is, there is one caveat to that. The original DJ figure comes with the Zeta Gundam's Hyper Mega Launcher for whatever reason. And although it's not really a loadout that the DJ uses from what I recall, it would have been nice to have it with this figure as well. I know we got an exclusive gun with this one in the form of the beam rifle, but Hyper Mega Launchers are cool and I really would like to have had it here, but at the same time, it, I don't think it was necessarily needed. Um, there is some drawbacks to the figure. Obviously, the, the hand issue that you have to be careful of. Um, there is some things with the pointy bits you have to watch out for, but that's with a lot of Robot Spirits figures lately. Um, you know, these are collector's pieces, so they're not really meant to be played with. So that kind of comes with the territory. And um, other than that, I mean, it's a really solid figure. Um, I recommend getting it if you're even remotely interested in it. And uh, I look forward to more Gundam narrative stuff. I really hope they move into kind of the Jesta, Rizal line, um, stuff from Unicorn. I really hope that they move forward with all this. So I really like it, and uh, I'll be buying... Buying more from this series line, absolutely. K Signature did not disappoint this time. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.